Hi, I'm Pat. And I got some great photos from folks. So let's get that on the screen and see what uh, what we got here. All right. And here we go. I'm going to share this. All right. Does that look good there or? Looks good. Yep. Okay. So this is, uh, this little evening hour is being co-led uh, and co-sponsored by uh, Northeast Wildlife Trackers and BEAT or Berkshire Environmental Action Team. Now Northeast Wildlife Trackers is, it was, is kind of works through BEAT at this point and uh, we organize a, a tracking uh, conference in October. It'll be in October this year in row, northeastwildlifetrackers.org uh, for information. Uh, so I would, you know, that's my, that's my uh, push for that is get involved and come out. And there's, there's, there's lots of, there's newsletters you can sign up for and uh, so there's a lot of information there. So take a look at that and then beat, you know, and if you, even if you don't know it, um, you should be here. Hold on a second. I'm like, uh, all right. <laughs> you know what? I'm trying to get this to, uh, Oh, there it is. I didn't know which. So, Beat does a wonderful job in the Berkshires and beyond, and they need money. And so you should send them money. Is And I'm being a very blatant and just being obvious. Send them money. They're a great organization. And when you bring the money, you got they got a new building. They need help getting it. They need, needs to get some work done on it. So go for it and give them a... a Give them a few bucks and Jane might even give you a tour if she's around and bring your old batteries because I take care of the battery recycling. So bring your batteries that are out that no, none of that are corroded, but bring some batteries and put them in the bo green box and we'll get them uh, recycled. So there's a whole bunch of stuff happening there. So I'm just, just handing that out right there. And here's our first one. And this is from Christine, I think, in Lanesboro. I, uh, and uh, I put the Northeast Wildlife Trackers logo on there for a reason. But I take a look at that. And uh, you see her foot at the very top, her, her uh, or a foot. I'm not sure if it's hers, but a foot at the very top. And the Birkenstock and then the yardstick. So it's a sizable track. And it looks, there's more than one, obviously. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts on that? And there's a, there's a hint on, in the logo. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> so you look at that and you count toes. We all muted ourselves, Black Bear. Ginny, are you, you got a, a... Black Bear. Black Bear, why do you say that? Um, experience, all seeing right, them in my backyard. Okay, and what do you see in, the, in that photo? The size, right. the toenails, the, the shape of the pad. Okay. Jim, you have anything to add? Yeah, I was going to say, Jane, uh, picking up on your hint, uh, your little logo there, you can see there's a bear print there uh, on the right-hand side. And then looks like a human print that it's partially over top of. And then uh, on top of that human print, we got something else. But we'll leave that alone for the moment. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bear print, uh, two sets of bear prints, 
And because they're big, number one, there's little in our area that's that size. Uh, but there's, yeah, other stuff going on there. It looks like it might have been some human prints earlier on that the bear stepped on top of. Um, what else? That's what all that comes to. Doesn't it also look like the bear are two different sizes? Yeah, a little hard to tell that. Um, but it the could well be. The yardstick looks like a much smaller print than the top left. So maybe that's just melting. Well, you got front and hind feet, so they have different. They're different sizes, also. Okay. Right, right. And how do you tell left from right? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yes. And that's a peculiarity of. Uh, of uh, black bear prints. If you look, if you look at the logo, you'll see the footprint, the human footprint in, that's there is somebody's left foot. Mm -hmm. And the bear print that's there is also a bear's left hind foot. Yeah. And the what's different, if you look at that, is the big, what we would think of as a our big toe in the bear, even it's the smallest of the toes. Where yeah. we have our big toe, they have their smallest toe. Yeah. Uh, so that can throw people off, uh, but it's just something to remember. Uh, and also on the on the uh, on the left side of the uh, kind of in the middle left side, there's another print that's there. And I couldn't, I'm not sure what it is, except it looks, it's like two little, they look like even little ears. And uh, it might've been a rabbit. Yeah. Or uh, possibly a squirrel. A, yeah, or a squirrel. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to tell from what the information, and that's the one thing I wanna make sure people understand, being able to, uh, Photos, if you're looking at something going, I don't necessarily see everything. It's it's hard. People who have had some experience bring in information. They may not even be aware of it uh, and bring in information from that isn't obvious, but it's obvious if you have some, some experience. So ask a question if you're not sure, please don't. Well, that's the whole point of this. So are we ready to move on? If, are there any questions on this? All right. And here's from Lisa Hoyt, who's uh, with uh, Dyke and Pond up in uh, Grafton, New York. And it's no surprise, it's more of the same, but it's a, it's a pretty clear one, you know, a single print. And which foot is that is the question. So you would look at that and, you, and it's the same foot as the one that is uh, the human foot that's, print, that's there. So that's the right foot of a black bear. Uh, it was up and so we will move on. So going from the large, one of the largest animals around here, we're going to go to one of the smallest. Uh, you would probably see this in your backyard, even if you have a backyard. Uh, this little, and you can see from the tape, it's, it's the, that little hole that's under that little black round thing. That's the hole, the size of the animal. So it's, a, you know, maybe a inch at the most, like a, if that. So does anyone have any thoughts on that? Feel free to unmute yourself and jump in. I'm guessing bowl. Guessing bowl. I think, yeah. How do you, what, and what, why do you think that? Uh, because of the subnevian parts that they are in and out of the snow and there's, you know, considerable under, uh, tunneling in the snow layer but then the out they come out and they pop back in and 
that to me is a sign and, and the size. Yeah, yeah. The kind of dragging through the soft snow on the surface there. Yeah, this was from Jake, I think. Um, Corey Heath also suggested short tail shrew. Uh huh. Well, it's you know it's hard to tell. the The other thing when you look at it, it's if the the little trail that it leaves. It's a, uh, I'm going to go to the next slide just because it gives a more detailed look at that. Um, she says, hopefully here. Um, so that's another view of the little trail that was in the snow. And it you can see that that animal was it was probably trotting is what they usually do. They're not ones to leisurely walk around. They usually move pretty quick because they don't want to be outside too much, out in the exposed. But it's a, that would be a, tip, a typical little gate or walk, way a, a vole would walk or a shrew. So it, it's difficult to tell. And that's the other thing about photos that even with me measurements, it's not always obvious um uh what it is uh um someone else was shelby marshall was wondering if a bull would have a tail drag in the snow they could they have a very they have a pretty short tail so it doesn't usually it doesn't always show up it does you know it can but uh it's not as with a with a mouse you would see it more at longer tail but they you know they can it depends on the snow uh, and both in shrews too they have short trail tails they don't they don't have a big long tail either so but those are these are little these little things are ones that you would see um you see these little animals uh you know wherever you are you'll see these little little guys so uh, they're they're like the uh, the food they feed everybody else. Uh, so yeah, I mean the size of that hole looks to be about an inch. I would you know I would go more with bowl just from what I see in the photo, but but there's other possibilities for sure. And thank you for everybody for all those suggestions on that. So. Um, All right, so we will go to the next. Oh, now here, this is from Jane. And Jane submitted this. This is in your backyard, right, Jane? Yes, it is. Yeah, so I did this because I thought this was kind of cool. You look at where the feet are. This is a, a obviously a, a cottontail and the back feet. And then you can see one of the front feet anyway. But if we do the next slide, there's the print. So you can see if we go, go back, here's, you can see where the back feet are. And, the, and now, now you can see where the, you can see where they, where the print was left, uh, the way the animal moves. So it put down its front feet. So here we go to the, I labeled it. It put down its front feet, its front feet, and brought the hind feet around on either side and made this little, um, and that's its print. And sometimes the these print, you can see the front feet are not right next to each other. And that, if there's a confusion about it, that, that would mean that's more likely to be a rabbit where squirrels can make a similar tr track but they tend to leave their feet together more often. Their, their front feet are together as well as their hind feet, are, you know, they're, so it's, it's, they don't have the elongated. And I think Richard Green talked about this, if you're on that other call, uh, other talk a few uh, last month, uh, he talked about this. So we won't spend too much time on that, but I thought it was kind of fun to see the hair actually make the track and then be looking at the track. So now this is from Jim Pelletier 
I don't know if Jim, you are you on yet or no? Yeah, I'm back uh, for the hey. moment anyway. <laughs> All right. This is well, my daughter's driveway. It's very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, you don't uh, often see this animal's tracks. I've only seen them once before in my backyard in a muddy spot. And then my daughter sent me this. So anybody have a guess as to who done it? And how would you know? And I'm going to. I'm going to, Jim, I'm going to show the close-up, all right? Yeah. So that's a close-up. I, I... We have two people in the, the chat suggesting a possum. Yes, that's exactly right. And um, you can tell, um, well, several ways. One, that tail. Uh, but two, the, their print has... Uh, like their thumb kind of stuck off to the side. And I don't, you can see it a little bit in those close up prints. I'm going to, I'm going to show you next. Then I put one of mine in. There you go. Yes. That's a close up of an opossum print. Yeah. On the first one, the, the bottom most print was a single foot. So you could see the spread pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go back for a little bit. And let's, the first one. Yeah. 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 Yep. Really down toward the bottom, you can see one right, foot. Right, right. Yeah. So which foot is that? Front or hind? Okay. <laughs> can you tell from the shape of the foot? All right, I'm gonna go, I'm yeah, gonna that? go, I'm gonna go back to this one. Uh and Jim, do you want to talk about that? The, yeah. uh, um, I think so. <laughs> it, uh, that looks like a hind to me. Well, it's um, both. It's both. Y yes, but uh, the front, well, I'm not sure. Is, is the front on top of the hind there? Well, the front, when the possums put down their front feet, and this would be their right side of their body. Yep. They put down their front foot, which is the which is the print on the right, yep, and then yep. they bring their hind foot up right behind their front foot. Right, and their right. hind right. foot is this kind of curved uh, shape. You can just barely see on the bottom the the toes. There's like one, two, yep. three, four. I think. Yeah, and one, then two, three, the one four, up then... towards the top, which is the thumb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, they have this very odd shape to their to their uh, hind foot, and then when they step on, you know, they they kind of make this hot mess when they're try when they're putting prints down. Uh, it's really sometimes hard to decipher what it is. But uh, now, if I remember right, Pat, aren't these animals relatively uh, uh, quiet in the winter and don't often come out? Uh, I, I think that's the case, but I'm not absolutely sure. I I think they're quite, you know, they're like raccoons and possums and a lot of things. When it's really cold, they'll kind of tuck in for a bit. But when it gets to any, obviously it was a little warmer. The snow was melted on this one anyway. They're, they're out and about. Um, I, I'm right. sure it depends on how hungry they are. Um, a lot of possums lose their the tips of their tail because they're they're from the south and they're not their tails are naked they can't um, so they freeze off parts of their tails will freeze off and it will, you'll see a lot of possums with a, if you see a possum it will have a short tail because it, it froze up at least up this way so all right cool. And here, now this one, this is, I'm trying to think who sent this in. This was from another Lisa Hoyt up in the, up in the Rensselaer Plateau up in Grafton. Uh, she didn't send any explanation with it. Uh, it's, and there's no measurements per se. 
but it's uh, it's a bird. I hope you can tell from the wing prints. Does anyone have any thoughts on that? It was, it's walking around. Yeah. Um, some folks are saying owl and hawk in the chat. Okay. We have a grouse, turkey vulture. Hmm. Interesting. That's those are all interesting. I, I'm looking at this. Um, if you follow the the if you, where the bird wings are, if you go straight down from the bird wings, it had something had walked walked down uh, kind of curved down to the bottom of the picture. And it might be more than one bird. And I, I that that particular Y shape track kind of somehow in my head puts a crow or a raven in mind. Uh, but I, you know, I'm, I was hoping people had some, I'm not convinced it would be a vulture, uh, possibly a hawk, but I don't, you know, it, this is a mystery one to me. I don't, you know, I didn't know if Lisa would be on and would have any thoughts about that and what, um, what she saw, but it seemed like this bird landed and then walked around and walked over to the log, walked along the log to the left hand, toward the left hand side of the photo and here, and then it was busy over there too. And I'm, so I, was anyone really, I, I would love to have some ideas on what people, Aside from the animal, it's the bird itself, what people were thinking about when they um, what they see on this photo, what might might be happening. So Pat, I, I see the same things you mentioned, but uh, I'd also add there's those tracks that appear to be coming in from the lower left uh, almost suggest that the bird was walking and then um, maybe stood still uh, just below the center. Because then you see a set of small, sort of like wind prints just below the full set that you see. Yeah, there. I see that. Yeah, yeah. So I wondered if the animal was that the bird was walking and then for some reason um, had its wings out in front and then made one flap to land where you see the big wing print. Right, right. Um, I don't know if there was a crow there that it was or some other bird that it was trying to come down. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. And it would be really interesting to know what was in that mess over at the left-hand side right. near the end of that log to help shed some light on this. You know, you but, say that, I'm like, I am, and maybe other people are feeling the same way of, I just want to, let me just step into this photo and kind of walk around and look from different mm -hmm. sides because I don't have quite enough information. And I bet I could figure this out if I could look closer. But uh, it's one of those frustrations with photos is yeah. that you can't always tell. Um, I suppose it could be a hawk. I suppose it could, I'm, or it could be a crow or a raven. Um, it's a little, it seems a little bit small for a raven. It could be a, uh, an owl, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know that we're going to come up with an answer, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, at least I'm not going to be able to. Other people may have. No, but. Um, Do you know other... if, the, if the water, if under the log was 
also ice, solid ice, or was there any open water there? Because I've seen a lot of activity on our stream that's mostly frozen, but there's one little hole and there's all this crow, all these crow prints around this one little hole in the stream in the ice. And I'm, I, mm. that, so I'm seeing that bird, if it was a crow or whatever, walking over and checking to see if there's any uh, open, non-frozen water. They seem to really enjoy mm. poking around like that. So that's my impression. Mm. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, yeah, that could be. Yeah, yeah I the don't other, know. The Go other ahead. thing that would be helpful to uh, know in this case would be whether or not that print occurred in, in dark or light mm -hmm. and you can't always know that of course but um well you will find owls hunting during the day that much more common at night of course mm -hmm. i don't see any like little vole uh, you know, like a tunnel kind of i was i was looking to see if there was some kind of little because it, it doesn't it's pretty shallow snow so yeah, I think if there was a vole of some sort, you would see their little tunnel or tracks. I don't really see that. Um, I don't, this is going to be a mystery. I don't have the answer for it. So, and that's how tracking goes. Sometimes you don't know. Uh, but I liked the, I liked it. I thought that was fun to look at. And I was hoping other people had some thoughts on it, which they did. So very good. We're, and now we'll have another mystery one. Here's the bird. I think Amy uh, Amy sent this in. Um, and again, I don't know. I've looked at my bird books for tracks, and it's not clear to me what this is at all, even with the measurements. It's certainly a big bird because that tracking, um, that keeping track ruler that from end to end is 19 inches. So it's a decent sized bird for sure. Yeah. Um, and you, you can see that would be the, the right wing and. Looks uh, like part of a tail showing there and yeah, yeah, a couple but, of tracks. And I, I was trying to look at the tracks to see if I could figure out because owls and crows and ravens, they all have different, their, their, their feet. Uh, have different shapes to them, but it is not, uh, I'm not clear. I am not clear. And she didn't know either, uh, as I recall. Uh, there were no walking tracks at all, she said. So it landed, it just kind of plopped. And then, so a grouse probably would have walked around. Uh, so Another mystery. Birds are mysteries. So we don't have. We, I, I love. I love the shapes that they make, but it's always not always easy to find. Um, someone in the chat wonders if it's a barred owl, just based on the wing shape and the wingspan. Could could be. Yeah. Um, it also kind of looks like the the tracks are anziodactyl rather than. Like an owl, I think, has, what is it, zygodactyl? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. But I was, I hesitated to be too, uh, be too sure of that. But you're right. Uh, to me, it, it, thank you, Chelsea. That's a good. Can you explain what that means? Would you? The anziodactyl and zygodactyl? Yes. yes. Um, so just anziodactyl, if I'm recalling correctly, it's uh, when their three front toes are facing forward and then one facing backwards. And then zygodactyl, which is what owls have, and I think raptors as well, or at least most, um, they have kind of like two up front and two in the back, which cause more of like a X to K shape. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that too. It looked like there were that they had more the the forward facing the three forward facing although it was i didn't see three but I, I maybe there's a shadow of a third so yeah yeah but i just uh i thought that was a nice one to to share with folks um all right 
And on to the next one. So Kathy Kessler sent this one in. I love this one. I love it. So take a look at that and look at, and you can kind of see it's, it's not clear, but you could, I, you, you would probably, unless you can pull it out of your, you know, you've got information in your head. The uh, It's good to look at a, a tracking book to kind of confirm it, which is what I did. Uh, but there's toes. You can see that they have in that second one up, it looks like a left side. That's a like a thumb for us. One and then one, two, three, four. So that would probably be a right foot. Uh, and then the other thing that's that's peculiar about these, you see the nails in the bottom print, especially bottom and third one up. You see how the nails stick out. So that's a really big clue. And you can see the size with the ruler there. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so it's about an inch and a half, two inches. So it's a fairly small ant mammal. Um, a couple of people are saying porcupine or skunk. Yeah. So... The, uh, the, um, it is a skunk and good, good guess on the porcupine too, because both of those animals have nails to stick far out in front of where they're, I say far out, they stick out in front of their, of where their toes end. So their nails, the nails go further out, uh, and but porcupine feet would be much bigger than, than that. Uh, they have, their feet are you know, three inches anyway, four inches, their hind feet are, are decent size. So it would be pretty small for a, uh, it would be a very tiny porcupine. This is the exact right size for a skunk. So that's a, that was a fun one to, to, uh, to kind of work through having to work through it. You have to, you know, to work through and go, okay, there's how many toes, the shape you can see in the middle or the second one up from the bottom, you can kind of see where their, their heel pad is uh, in the, in the back. Uh, and then there's, there's this little shape missing, missing, uh, uh, there's there's snow it, it it didn't get pressed down and then you got your your toes so it's kind of fun to look at that that whole uh, the way the pads make the different shapes uh, but that was a, that was a good one does anyone have any questions about that does that do people if you don't see something that I'm talking about just let do something in chat or unmute yourself and ask the question because. Uh, Otherwise, we'll go. We'll keep going. I did catch the the guy on my trail cam, so there, there I did get some verification of it, and also right. it was it was near my chicken coop, which is the, <laughs> other, the other piece of information that was quite important there. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging around, snooping. yeah. That's good. Very good. Thank you, Kathy. All right, this is my friend up in uh, Maine. I was telling her about this. She says, oh, I'll send you. Uh, so she she sent this in. This is a good one. It's a good puzzle. Um, her hand kind of gives a, some sense of size. Uh, she's not a big person. She's uh, about average, but uh, you see... The bot in the bottom, those two round brown things are our scat. Uh, if you look on the left one in particular, you can see probably some hair in that. It's a decent sized animal. Not a, it's 
it's not a you know it's not bear size certainly but uh there weren't the tracks weren't good it was really it, it was crusty so she didn't get any good tracks but she knew what it was uh she knows what it is so one, is per any oh, one person suggests okay. fox and estrus good guess but it's that's not quite right uh but Yes, it was a female, it's a female coyote uh, in estrus. So when they, uh, you know, she left some scat, she, and she also left, she's, she's uh, receptive for, or will be for uh, uh, mating. So she, they, you can find that. So you, now, you know, it's a female coyote, not just a coyote, um, but that's, uh, and you can see the hair, uh hair in the uh left side uh, the little the little uh, piece of scat some hair or grass sticking out and, and grass sticking out so they uh so yeah um, any questions about that so so uh in the chats kathy mentioned it's not twisted so could it likely be a bobcat rather than a canid well i i'm i understand what you uh, i am going it could be i guess it could be my this gal i know up in maine was felt that it was probably a coyote but you're right it, you know i i'm not sure on what she based this uh, I took her at a word, but there is Kathy. That's a good good idea in having the smaller uh, bits of scat. The you know the, the sections of scat would it could be. Yeah, you know, I uh, Jan may not be correct on that. I don't know. Uh, she didn't. I didn't have any other. Uh, she didn't have any other photos that went along with it, uh, as far as showing the coyote part of it how she knew it was coyote and she couldn't be on the call tonight or else she would go into, she would talk about that. So uh, uh, we'll just have to, thank you, Kathy. That's a good point. Good point. Anybody else? All right, we'll go on to, this is from Sue who I think is on the call. Sue, you got anything to, you want to say about this? Uh, well, they were on a pond. Um, I guess you can see what they are. Anybody want to give a guess as to what the animal is? So I'm going to give them a close-up too. Okay. Here's a close-up. Well, this is a nice little print, so this little picture. Yeah. yeah, it was a bobcat on a pond. At Canoe Meadows, there's a lot of rabbits over there, so I see a lot of bobcat tracks quite often. And if you look, if for those of you unfamiliar with bobcat, the, the top print it's it's walking uh, to the left and you can see there's four toes and then a pad and if you look at the second toe over from uh, second toe up from the middle you will see that toe is a little bit further forward than the third toe so that helps you go okay that's the right side that's the right foot and i think that's a right hind foot it's a smaller the hind feet of a lot of uh, mammals like dogs and canines of sorts and cats they have their front feet are a little larger the pads are larger compared to the hind because they have more weight up front and that's true of a lot of a lot of mammals but so this is the right side and it's not and you it's like if you looked at your hand and took your 
look at your right hand and took your took your thumb out of the picture, you would see that your that your middle finger there is longer. So it's the same exact thing on a bobcat. You'll see that the middle toe sticks out longer. That second toe end sticks out longer. Uh, so that's a that's great, Sue. Thank you for sharing that. It was doing a uh, bobcat's like it's got a, this. It likes to do the a, a, a understep walk, so yeah. it's it's a little different. It it, it doesn't kind of necessarily do a direct register, which a lot of animals do. And this is this is one of mine that I put in just for comparison. This is a red fox mm -hmm. going in the uh, going the toes are pointing to the right. And you can see that's a canine. A red fox is in the canine family. And they're very um, uh, symmetrical as far as if left, if you put a line down the middle or a line from the left side to the right side to the center of the track, it would look the same on either side. It's uh, where a bobcat, it wouldn't, one toe would be further out. And again, uh, red fox, you see that bar, that's a beautiful, you don't always see it, but that's like a, you can be sure it's a, it's a red fox when you consistently see that. And here's a good one. I don't, people take a look at this for a minute and let me know what you, let us know what you, what you think. One person suggested otter. Otter, okay. Now this was covered up by snow. It snowed, whatever the animal that made this, it snowed after it made this. Um, a couple of folks are also suggesting, <laughs> excuse me, uh, like a deer bed imprint that's been snowed over. And that would be, that would be it. That would be, um, I can see why somebody might think it was an otter print, although it probably, or an otter slide, but it's a little bit, it, it seems like it would go long further th along than that. It would, it's, it's, but I can see how that might step, come into your, in your mind. If you, I'm just going to go one forward. I put, I, I did one. Here you can see that where I put the red is the back of the deer resting. So let me go backwards. And now you can take a look again. You see the back of the deer was there. I, in my, I think that the head of the deer was to the left. And left, somebody else have any thoughts on that? It's a little hard to tell, but I, I think you can see the, um, the head there in the left side, but it's not obvious. It's not real clear at this point, but they lay down for, it could be for a while. They chew it like they'll rest, they eat, and then they lay down, they rest like that, they lay down and they, they are ruminants. So they have a cud and they will chew their cud just like a cow. Uh, and kind of relax for a little bit, uh, conserve energy. This time of year, they got to conserve energy because they got to make get to the neighborhood and eat people's bushes, I think, is what, what they have to do. Uh, I'm going to give you a, does anyone have any questions on that or any, or any thoughts about it? All right, um, here's another one, next one. Now this is one of mine, obviously not taken this winter, but I want, it, I want you to look at that and see what you see. See if you can figure something out about that. Tell me about that.
I saw this when I was, I just was wandering through a little piece of wood, little, just off the road. The road is, it's a little dirt road. It's just to the, just beyond that bigger tree base, you see. And I just happened upon, I, I kind of, my eye scanned, I, I walked slowly through the woods and I, my eyes kind of scanned across this and then kind of whipped whip back because I thought, well, that's something, there's something there. What is that? And it took me a little bit to, I had my suspicions right off, but I wandered back and forth. Anyone have any ideas on it? Um, someone suggested turkey scratching. That would be like in the front there, toward the front maybe, they're thinking. All right, anyone else? All right, I'm gonna to go to the next photo. Someone and else deer, said bedding again. It's a deer bed. And you can see where my, my uh, arrows, um, my crude little red arrows, if you look at the ground pine, it's flattened. And, and I'm gonna go back to the other one. And do you see how the ground pine is flattened in a couple of places? And you can see the curve in the leaves in the back there. And that's where a deer lay down for a little bit. Uh, it's subtle and I, I'm not trying to make you crazy, but I just thought um, it's, it's the kind of thing you can uh, pick up if you take your time walking through the woods. So there's that. That's what tipped me off. Uh, all right, and here, this is from Pam Landry. And there's no measurements, but you know, you look at it and go, oh, that's like a Michelin something or Goodyear, but it's not. not a it's not a tire track. Uh, I don't know if Pam's on. I think she's, I don't know if she wants to talk about it at all. Um, there are a few, few folks saying otter slide, beaver tail drag. Um, yeah. Nice. So uh, Pam said it was an otter slide. But when I first looked at it, I thought, well, that looks like tire tracks are crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> But I love it. Yeah, that is an otter slide going. Uh, must have been pretty wet uh, uh, snow, slushy snow or ice. And that's a water hole. Just barely, you can just barely see it uh, go into the water up on the left side. And there's tracks um, uh, going kind of diagonally away from the hole. Uh, of otter so you can see the three there it's a uh, as it as it pulled itself out of the hole so that's kind of fun it's a, it's not obvious uh and as i say people are uh, uh it's hard when you're just looking at a photo to know you don't have the whole perspective of what's happening and I just want to apologize that there was a fellow named Ray who sent me something this afternoon and I just did not have time to get that in there into this. Um, Ray, did you want to, did you know what that was? Uh, Pat, I, I didn't, you know, I, we have a, a good size yard in the back and, uh, you know, we were curious whether or not it was, you know, I think looking at it, it looks like perhaps a dog, but, you know, I, I've never seen any dogs on our property. Um, so there's probably not a way to send it now, is there? I, well, I couldn't, I can't get it into the, okay. I didn't have time to get it into the PowerPoint this afternoon. So my apologies, but I did want to tell you it looked, yeah, it looked like a, it looked like a canine of some sort. Now, whether it was a dog 
or a coyote, sometimes you can tell better from the trail something leaves and not just a single track. Um, so if the trail was pretty straight and direct going from one point to another, it might be a might point more to a, like toward a coyote if it was wandering all over the place and then it might point more to a dog. But it's, as I say, it's, I couldn't really, I couldn't really, I couldn't be sure. I couldn't be sure from the, from the track itself. So. Okay. Uh, thank you for taking my, a look at it. Oh, absolutely. My apologies for not having time to get it into the program. Um, all right. So I, this is the last one. Uh, this was the last track. So I'm going to, stop the sharing and does if and if there's any comments questions anyone where you want to talk about anything we're kind of toward the end it's it was going to be about an hour so um i'd be happy to chat with, with anyone who has any questions i appreciate your attention uh, i have a question about the last photo yeah um what caused those distinguishable lines within the otter slide? Because when I first saw it, I honestly thought um, it, it kind of reminded me of like pine borer tracks in in a tree. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, Pam, do you, are you there? I am here. Do you want to talk about it at all? Um, yeah, and some of the other folks that are on Mike and um, saw it as well. Um, so it was on Harvard Pond in Petersham and clearly the, the ice had been slushy when the otter moved through. So all the tracks were um, pretty well distorted. Um, many of the tracks had a tail, um, sort of compression in the, in what would have been the slush at the time, and then it turned to ice. Um, and I think in that on that pond, there's also a lot of wind. Um, and I think between the slush and the, um, it's probably a lot of thawing and, and freezing and thawing and freezing and then wind when it was slushy. And for some reason it made that, that impression. And there were a couple other little um, slides that were, um, sort of not as decorative as that larger one, but um, you know, the otter was moving from um, various islands within the pond, um, sort of exploring past some um, abandoned beaver lodge and then continuing on to some other islands. But I think it was just the, the, um, the composition of the, the slushy, icy, um, pond and then the the wind um, and and just probably from the you know leg impressions and belly impressions and tail impressions that then were distorted from the yeah there was some the condition was going on yeah okay thank you you're welcome thanks Pam you're welcome Pat little yeah. does anyone else have any questions comments? It was, thank you all. Thank you all so much for sharing, uh, for sharing your photos and sharing the evening. It was uh, an hour, it was, it was great fun. It was great fun. If you have, uh, you can go to northeastwildlifetrackers.org and there is a website that will give you books that suggested books on help with, with learning about tracks there's, uh, you can sign up for our newsletter. Uh, you can give us a donation too, if you so desire. Uh, that would be great too. So, uh, you know, go check it out. You all have my email. If you have, if you want to send me photos, you know, I'll be happy to take a look at them and, 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 and ask other people too. And we can uh, kind of learn. I learned something from other people. So that's my, I'm being pretty selfish by asking you to send me photos. So um, I'm, I'm set, I'm done. And uh, uh, again, thanks. So we will, I guess we'll say good night. 
And thank, thank you, Pat. you, Pat and Jim. Yeah, thank you. Thank yes, you. Jim. Thanks, Absolutely. Jane. And Chelsea. Yes, thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate it. And fun right. to see, see everybody. Your faces. Take care. Bye. <laughs>